This is Coding Math, Episode 10, Advanced Acceleration. We're continuing our series on basic physics for computing. Last time we got a taste of acceleration and saw how it can be used to simulate a force acting on an object. And we saw that gravity itself applies acceleration to an object to pull it downwards. In this episode, we'll build on what we learned there and create a much more dynamic example of acceleration in action. In one of the examples last week, we just had a mysterious force pulling an object down and to the right. But we didn't really say what that force was. Also, all of the examples just had a single, unchanging acceleration factor. In the real world, forces can be, and usually are, varying and dynamic. They may turn on and off, or change in the amount of force they are applying, and the direction of the force will very likely change as the position or orientation of the moving object itself changes. So in most cases, we'll not only have to apply the force on each frame, but we'll have to figure out what that force is first before applying it. In the first example, we'll start with a simple particle that can be propelled in one of four directions. We'll build this up into something that will be pretty cool and immediately very useful. We'll start with the basic animation template that we've used in the last couple of videos. This just has an update function that gets called repeatedly with request animation frame. And make sure your HTML file has the vector and particle JS files from last episode, as well as the main application JS file. If you want, you can check out the files at github.com slash bit101 slash coding math. We'll create a single particle called ship and initialize it at the center of the screen with a speed and angle of zero. And we'll make a vector called thrust and we'll initialize that to zero, zero. We'll use the arrow keys to dynamically change the value of this vector and then we'll use that to accelerate the ship, changing its velocity. So we'll have to listen to the key down and key up events to know when a key is pressed or released. First we'll do key down, and we'll create the key down handler. To determine which key is being pressed, we check the key code property of the event object that gets passed into the event handler. I happen to know that the key codes for left, up, right, and down are 37, 38, 39, and 40. But if you ever need to find out what the code for a particular key is, you can just do a console log right here, and then run the program and press the key you want to know about. Check the console, and there's your answer. We'll use a switch statement to address the four keys we need to handle. Now when the up arrow key is pressed, which is key code 38, we'll set the Y component of thrust to a small negative value, say minus 0 0.1. And when the down arrow key is pressed, key code 40, we'll set it to a positive 0 0.1. And when the left or right arrow keys are pressed, which are 37 and 39, we'll set the X component of the thrust same way. Now, when any one of those keys are released, we'll want to set the appropriate component of thrust back to zero. So we can just copy and paste this whole code block. And then we'll change the event name to key up. And we'll set all the values back to zero. Now we just need to call accelerate on the ship on each frame, passing in this thrust vector, and then call update on the ship, and then finally draw the ship. For now, we'll just draw like we've been drawing the particles in the last two videos with a simple circle. And we can open this up in the browser. And you can see that if I press the left and right cursor keys, the ship moves back and forth on the x-axis. And you can see that it speeds up as I hold down one key and then slows down and eventually reverses as I hold the other key. Then pressing up and down cursor keys does the same thing on the y-axis as well. Now things are much more fluid. And note that it takes just a few quick taps to get the ship moving in a certain direction, or to stop it and turn it around. In fact, it's pretty easy for the ship to go off screen and get lost. And once it's out of sight, it can be nearly impossible to navigate it back to the viewable window in the screen. We can throw in a quick fix for that just by causing the ship to wrap around the sides of the screen. We'll throw in a few if statements right at the end of the update function. This checks the position of the object. If it's off the right edge of the canvas, meaning it's greater than width, we'll put it back on the left edge, zero. If it's off the left edge, less than zero, we'll put it back on the right edge, width. And we'll do the same thing with the top and bottom edges. Now you can see that as we play with this, anytime the ship goes off one side of the screen, it reappears on the other side. 
Now there are more accurate ways to do this that would take into account the size of the object and its speed, but this is good enough for now. Anyway, you can now see how acceleration can be dynamic. On sometimes, off sometimes, set at different angles. But we can improve on this a whole lot. Rather than just four directions, let's make a more realistic ship, allow it to be rotated, and align the acceleration to the angle the ship is actually facing. This is exactly what you'd see in a game like the old classic, Asteroids. And it's a great exercise in understanding acceleration. First we'll need some better code for drawing the ship. It'll need to be capable of being rotated, as well as drawn at any point on the canvas. Now back in episode 5 on Arctangent, we did something similar with an arrow that always pointed at the mouse. If you recall, what we did was translated the canvas to the point we wanted to draw the arrow, then rotated the canvas, then drew the arrow at 0, 0, and restored the canvas. We'll do the same thing with this ship. First we'll need a variable to store the current rotation of the ship. This will be a single number variable called angle, and we'll set it to 0 to start. Then in the update function, we'll save the current context, translate the context to the ship's xy position, rotate the context to angle, and then draw the ship. The ship will just be three lines forming a triangle, so it's a begin path, move to, line to, line to, line to, and a stroke. And finally, we need to restore the context. We can test what we have now. And yes, it draws a ship-looking ship, but otherwise it has the same behavior as before. Now we'll continue to use the cursor keys to move the ship, but with an entirely different strategy. Now the left and right keys will rotate the ship left and right, and the up arrow key will apply thrust in whatever direction the ship is facing. Like before, pressing a key down will activate the action for that key, either rotation or thrust, and releasing that key will deactivate it. For this logic, I'm going to use three Boolean variables to keep track of each of these states. Turning left, turning right, and thrusting. These will all start out as false. Now we'll just go through the key up and key down handling functions and set them to true when a key is pressed and false when a key is released. And while we're in here, we can get rid of the down arrow key case statement. Okay, now that we're done with that, Let's handle the rotation part. In the update function, we'll check for turning left and turning right, and increment or decrement the angle variable accordingly. I find that a small value like 0 0.05 works pretty well here. Much smaller and the ship turns too slowly, much larger and the ship spins around uncontrollably. But feel free to experiment with it. Now we can test this part of it. The ship won't move anywhere but we can press and release the left and right keys and get the ship rotating. So far, so good. Now this angle variable not only tells us how to draw the ship, it tells us what direction the thrust vector should be when the thrust is applied. If the ship is pointing straight up, the thrust should be in that direction. If it's pointing down and a little to the left, that's also the direction of the thrust vector. So let's code that part of it. The angle will be the direction of the thrust vector. We can set that very easily with set angle. And the thrusting variable tells us whether or not the ship is thrusting. We can control that with the set length method of the thrust vector. If thrusting, we say thrust set length 0 0.1. If not, thrust set length 0. And that's that. But let's add some visual indication that the ship is thrusting. You can get more complex, but I'll just draw a line coming out of the back. And I'll wrap that in an if statement so that it's only drawn if there is thrust. And we throw that into the browser, and oh yeah, look at that. Pretty sweet, right? So you're halfway to creating a game. Just add some bullets, which would be particles moving at a velocity that they have the same angle as the ship and some something to shoot, and some collision detection, and some better graphics, and... Okay, well, maybe you're not quite halfway there, but you're on your way. Anyway, I hope I've convinced you how awesome acceleration is. 
Next week, we'll be looking at gravity again, but much more in depth. And if you like today's video, I guarantee you'll find next week's just as cool. See you then.